Well, welcome into this week's Degrees of Science. The Mississippi River is down near historic lows, and that's caused problems for many locations. But one new problem that's caught national attention is the impacts this has on the potential of drinking water in New Orleans. So we brought in an expert and a New Orleans native, Steve Caparata from uh, WAFB, our sister station in uh, Baton Rouge. So Steve, to start out for people that haven't seen firsthand what the Mississippi River is like, how about of shape is that river in right now? Yeah, it's awfully low and it's pretty crazy because the story over the last decade or so is we've had high water event after high water event. So we've really been focused on flooding a lot in the last decade. And all of a sudden we get the other extreme this year where it's running too low. And so now we have this issue with the saltwater intrusion coming in from the Gulf of Mexico and up the Mississippi. It's a very slow process the one that's now, um, it's been unfolding uh, over the last couple or few weeks, and, and it looks like this is gonna be an issue for a while. So the saltwater intrusion, some people on the news may have seen it as that salt wedge that's moving in. Explain to folks, you know, what, what that is, where you, I mean, you got the Mississippi coming right into the Gulf of Mexico over there, but is that something that typically happens, or is this mainly just due to the drought going on? Yeah, it, uh, it certainly has happened before. In fact, uh, one of the things we might get into is they built, the Corps of Engineers has built this, uh, what they call an underwater sill, basically on the river bottom. Think of it as almost an underwater levee to try and prevent that saltwater wedge from getting farther up river. They had done it last summer because it's been running a little bit dry. They've done it before, but this one is progressing much farther up ri river. So what normally happens is, when we've got, you know, the Mississippi carries a huge volume of water down to the Gulf of Mexico. And so typically the vast majority of the time, there's so much momentum with that water that is southward bound toward the Gulf of Mexico that really prevents this saltwater uh, wedge from moving upriver towards New Orleans and other communities. But because we're in this drought that's impacting so much of the central and eastern part of the country that drains into the Mississippi. We just have a very low volume of water coming down the Mississippi. There's not much momentum right now. And so that saltwater wedge is now moving upriver and they, we just don't have that water to push it back out to the Gulf. So is this already causing problems in the New Orleans water area or what kind of bad problems are they expecting if it continues to move north? Yeah, so New Orleans is doing just fine right now. So far, this has been uh, largely an issue for smaller communities downriver of New Orleans. Uh, if, if your viewers may not be familiar, in Louisiana, we have parishes instead of counties. So uh, downriver from New Orleans and Orleans Parish, where New Orleans is, is Plaquemines Parish. Uh, mostly some smaller communities. They've already been dealing with this for a couple of weeks. But the difference there is because the population level is so small and because the amount of water, fresh water they need to produce is much smaller. It's a little bit easier to tackle that problem. But as we face this potential of this salt water wedge moving all the way up to New Orleans, which looks like it's still three to four weeks out. But as we face that potential, now you're talking about obviously a much larger population center, a much larger volume of fresh water that is needed and processed from the Mississippi. And so if you've got salt water coming into those fresh water intakes, that creates a whole host of problems. So since you're closer to there and you grew up in New Orleans, how are people reacting to this right now with that potential of the issues it could cause? Yeah, I think you're seeing really a, a range of reactions. A lot of people are saying, don't panic. We got this. We've been through much worse. And that's kind of a nod to obviously all the hurricanes that New Orleans dealt with. Two years ago was Ida. Everybody knows about Katrina. There's been many others. So a lot of people have lived there for a long time saying, you know, we've got this. We know how to handle this. There are some people that are obviously worried about it. And there, there's a percentage of the population, you know, a lot of what happens going forward is in the hands of the Corps of Engineers. And in around New Orleans and, and much of Southeast Louisiana, there is a bit of distrust when it comes to the Corps of Engineers for people that remember back to Katrina, a number of levee failures in and around the city. And after the fact, it was determined that a number of those levee failures the levees that have been built by the Corps were design failures. So it wasn't necessarily 
an act of nature that caused all the flooding and devastation with Katrina. There were there were human failures and design failures with the core. So I have seen a certain percentage saying, you know, I just don't trust the core given what has happened in the past. So you see a range of, of feelings and emotions with this. I think as the story started emerging over the last week or two, there was a big rush in around New Orleans to go out and scoop up as much bottled water as people could. Some of that um, sort of hysteria, if you will, has settled down a bit. Officials have really been trying to emphasize there was no need to go hoard all this bottled water. The bottled water supply is fine. Now, could very well get to the point where that bottled water is needed, but the officials are trying to say, we, we've got ample supply. The suppliers are telling us there are no issues. So they'll be able to replenish whatever is needed. So as a, as a meteorologist, would you ever thought back in June as you're heading into hurricane season that towards the end of September, you'd be talking about lack of rain causing issues and not a hurricane moving in? Yeah, it really is kind of crazy. And, and as I mentioned to you too, when you consider so much of our uh, focus with the Mississippi River in recent years has been, but it felt like we were in this new normal of every year being a high water event, the Mississippi running very high, which triggers its its own set of issues. You know, the Mississippi is levied, obviously, right? So bigger cities like New Orleans, like Baton Rouge, where I am, are protected even when it gets very hot. And then we've got these spillways and floodways that can be used and open when it gets exceptionally high, which we've had to deal with a few times over the last decade or so. So to all of a sudden hit this extreme contrast that on the opposite end of the spectrum, where we're dealing with it running so low, no doubt it, it's kind of a surprise, a shock. And just in general, you know, it's not something we're really used to. Water shortage in this part of the world is not something we're used to. You know, from New Orleans to Baton Rouge, you know, South Louisiana, most spots average 60 inches or more of rainfall in a given year, very wet climate. Uh, but one, one thing to note about that, and even people in my part of the world still don't understand this very well, rainfall that falls locally in South Louisiana, very little of that goes into the Mississippi. The Mississippi flow down here is largely driven by how much rain happens to our no north, how much snow happens up to our north, the winter snow when that occurs, and then as it starts to thaw and you get the melt, that's that's a big driver of the levels down this way. So no doubt, it, it's been a real surprise, something very different from what we're used to dealing with. So you were talking a little bit earlier about the, the core and the, the levee, underwater levee. Is what, what kind of issues they have to work with that where you want to bring the level up, but you've also got to, I mean, that's, that's a busy shipping area there too. How, how are they balancing that? Yeah, so initially a couple of weeks ago, they built this underwater sill, as they call it, that underwater levee. And it uh, basically, you know, mounded dirt up on top of the river bottom to slow the progression of that saltwater wedge. So not getting too deep into the weeds, but Salt water is heavier, more dense, so it tends to kind of ride along the bottom of the river bed. So the idea was if you build up this underwater levee, if you will, it kind of blocks the wedges progression upriver. So initially they built that 55 feet below the river surface. Uh, they have now over about the last week or so, I guess it is, They've been working on adding additional 25 feet on top of that underwater, building a bigger underwater sill or levee. But the challenge there too, as you kind of hinted at, is you, they're trying to block the salt water, but they still have to keep part of that channel open for big ships, right? The Mississippi River is just key to so much cargo and uh, so many of the goods that are consumed in the United States. It's such an important pathway. So they built the sill, but they have left a channel in the middle that is deeper to allow those deep draft ships through. And so that's still gonna allow some of that saltwater wedge through. They're just trying to block as much as they can. How hard is it on your job, you know, forecasting weather and communicating with your viewers that, you know, we, we need stuff that's hundreds of miles away really to help help the situation you're dealing with? I think we, you know, as you probably do with your viewers and you have to educate them on different things about your local weather, you know, we, we try to spend 
a good amount of time educating them along the way. And I think with the number of these high water events we've had in recent years, we have shown them, hey, where, where's all this water coming from? Oh, it's actually coming from the Ohio Valley. A lot of that is what drives the levels down here. People now have a better understanding of it, but it's still a point that we need to repeat often just to make sure that they understand that. And, and also that, you know, let's say we get uh, a cluster of storms that comes through South Louisiana next week and produces three, four, five inches of rain. That's going to do little to nothing for this issue on Mississippi. So, you know, next time we get a big rain event, I'm sure we'll be reminding everybody locally that that's, that's the case. All right, so you were talking about educating viewers. You have a PhD, which there's not many guys in TV or gals in TV, meteorologists that have that, so that, that's really awesome. But your focus part of it's on climatology and being someone that grew up in Louisiana and studied the weather. What, what kind of changes have you seen throughout your career you know, to the climate, to the overall weather uh, across Louisiana? Yeah, what I tell people, there are two main things that concern me, specifically in my part of the world and along the northern Gulf Coast. Number one is sea level rise. You know, everybody, obviously, um, when you talk about climate change, uh, that can get uh, people kind of taking their corners on how they feel about things. But one of the indisputable um, uh, things we know about climate change is that seas are rising, the sea level rise is, uh, the, the sea level rise is a very real thing. And that's a big issue in South Louisiana. You know, we, as it is, our coastal margin is made up of a lot of marsh. So it's, it's really kind of a blurry line, often trying to even figure out where the coast begins and, and where the coast ends and where the Gulf of Mexico begins. But we are already losing a lot of coast here in Louisiana. And it's a two-pronged thing. One is the sea level rise element that the uh, water is rising as time goes by. As the oceans get warmer, the sea level rises. The other thing is we're dealing with is something called subsidence, and that is the land beneath this is also sinking at the same time. So it's a double whammy. We've got oceans rising, the land below us is sinking. Some of that sinking land is due to Louisiana having been invested so heavily in the oil and gas industry for decades and decades, and the extraction of uh, those resources has actually caused the land to sink. So. It's a, it's a double-edged sword. So that was a long-winded answer, say, concern number one relating to climate and Louisiana sea level rise. Concern number two, primary concern number two for me is heavy rain events. So we, we've always had heavy rain events here. It's an area, as I said, that deals with a lot of rainfall even in an average year. But the concern now is those heavy rain events being heavier, and if we get when we get our tropical storms and hurricanes coming in, those storms producing more rain than they have in the past. Because the other thing we know about a warmer world, a warmer atmosphere, it can hold more moisture. And so when you get some sort of storm system to come along and wring out that moisture, it produces more rain. Where I am in Baton Rouge, we, we lived this seven years ago in 2016. We had a, a major flood. We had 20 to 30 inches plus of rainfall over a two-day period. And I saw flooding in Baton Rouge that I never imagined I would see. It was one thing to see what happened in New Orleans with Katrina, which anybody that grew up down there knew that potential was there. It was still hard to believe when it happened. But seeing it in Baton Rouge, Baton Rouge is actually kind of the first relative high ground up the Mississippi. And seeing the type of flooding we saw, that was uh, it was eye-opening. Well, Steve, I appreciate you taking some time to talk with us. Uh, love to see the science side of all of it. And uh, yeah, thanks for joining us. Yeah, my pleasure. Thanks for having me on.